This podcast is sponsored by AFC Richmond, delightfully mediocre ever since 1897, live from the dog track. And Shaw's Bar, serving up drink after drink to the hardworking cops of Brooklyn's 99th Precinct and all other patrons, just not firemen. Hello and welcome everyone to Coasters Explained, the podcast where we take all aspects of the roller coaster world and explain them to you. Today's topic is inverted roller coasters. I am, as always, your host, Everett Johnson, and from Kiev, Ukraine, I will be taking you riding and gliding along across the overhead tracking of an inverted roller coaster. Now for a segment that is unfortunately becoming a recurring one, we are pleased to report that for once... We have not had to change the name for this podcast due to a conflict in names. You would be surprised by the sheer amount of roller coaster podcasts out there. However, I have scoured the internet and have not found another podcast with the same name, and so hopefully we're going to be able to keep Coasters Explained for a while. And with that news news update, onto the podcast. Inverted roller coasters are different from traditional coasters because the cars hang from beneath the track rather than running on top of it. Generally, they are produced by B&M and Vacoma, Vacoma, with some notable examples of inverted roller coasters being rides like Dueling Dragons, Alpengeist, and Montu at SeaWorld. In order for a coaster to classify as an invert, it must fit the following criteria. It must be a roller coaster that has trains that run under the track and directly attached to the wheel carriage, with different variations of the same hanging design being used to create the B&M invert, the SLC, Family Inverted Coaster, and many other different models of Inverted Coaster, with variations in speed among these models going anywhere from 30 miles an hour, 48 kilometers an hour, to around 60 miles an hour, or 96 kilometers an hour. First built in the form of Batman the Ride in 1992, the Inverted Coaster is one of the most unique types of roller coaster out there. Now on to our next segment, something we like to call On the Lift Hill a segment where I review coasters I have ridden. Today, I will be reviewing my first inverted roller coaster, Alpengeist. And no, we aren't talking about the Ghost of the Alps. I am talking about the world's tallest inverted coaster, located in Busch Gardens, Williamsburg, in Virginia. This coaster has a lot of sentimental value to me, as it was at a point the tallest roller coaster I've ridden, and the second big roller coaster I've ever ridden. But how does it stack up as a roller coaster? Once you make your way up the elaborate alpine ski theming and onto the hanging trains themselves, you climb 195 feet, 59 meters, along the track held up by custom ski lift beam supports. You then fall into the layout that includes speeds up to 108 kilometers an hour or 67 miles an hour. You pass through an immelman into a vertical loop going through a cobra roll into the mid-course break run, all the while swooping through snowy theming like the true ghost of the Alps it is. It finishes the course with a zero G roll into a corkscrew before a helix brings the train back into the station after roughly 1,167 meters of track or 3,828 feet, lasting around 58 seconds. While the last ride I rated certainly outplayed the Alpenguise in how much it looks like it was at, at a ski resort, probably because it was, the ride still does a good job from the supports on the lift hill to the skis on the trains to the snow-covered valleys of the ride. I would give Alpengeist a 7 out of 10 for its excellent ski-like theming and scenery. Now for the intensity of this ride. While the ride itself didn't pull the same cheese as I threw a 5, for example, it did have the right amount of intensity, to the point where the ride offered plenty of intensity from its notable cobra roll to swooping drop of the river, but to a point where it still feels comfortable while still being intense. For this reason, I would give Alpengeist an 8 out of 10 for speed and intensity. Now on to our final category, unique elements. Alpengeist knocks it out of the park here with five different types of inversions in addition to a helix, mid-course brake run, and the fact that the trains are hanging. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Meanwhile, that runaway ski lift will receive the highest score in on the lift hill so far with 23 out of 30. We now move to the final segment of today's show, Coaster Questions. As a quick reminder, your question could be featured in next week's podcast about how to start riding roller coasters and if you have a fear of them, how to get over that, or any other questions you may have about roller coasters. Today's first question comes from Comic Fan, who asks, what is your favorite roller coaster you've ever ridden on? 
What is your least favorite? Comic fan, my favorite roller coaster of all time has to be Millennium Force at Cedar Point for its speed and the crazy airtime on that coaster. Hands down, my least favorite of all time was Grizzly at King's Dominion. That ride is in- intense and not in a good way. Our second question comes from Finn, who asks, What other information about roller coasters will you add to your website? Finn, I will be adding more information about my experience as an investor in the theme park industry, and maybe a bit more about how I make these podcasts. You will have to see. Wrapping things up here, thank you to all of you who sent in questions. It is, as always, greatly appreciated. Also, remember you can catch these episodes on our website. Link is in the description. Please leave me a comment with your questions for our next podcast, which will be on how to get over fears of roller coasters. And this has been episode three of Coasters Explained with Everett Johnson. I do hope you enjoyed it. And as always, ride on.